64. Okay, so basically the idea behind this concept was playing a mix of board breakers and handcuffs. Me and Ben both did top 64. Yes. And me, Zio, Ben, and the rest of the team, we cooked this meal together. Yes, and Zio just published. He went extreme, so he was very close, he didn't get it, but he had a top record. Also. But Zio top the number one. So, <laughs> so let's move on to the deck. Ben? Sure. So, um, very standard Snake Eye Engine, 3 Bonfire, 3 Ash, 2 Poplar, 1 Oak, 1 Flame Birch, the Snake Diabell, and 1 of each of the spells. I don't think there's much to say about this. This super standard. I haven't seen anyone play else. Actually, one of my opponents played Birch, but yeah. It's interesting. Um, yeah, then additional starters 3 DL star, 3 Wanted. Very standard. Max out on starters. I think there's a bit of a discussion whether you side those out going second or how many you side out, but we could talk about, about that in the side deck maybe. Um, standard Fieldsmith package, um, three Fieldsmith starters. Uh, post side, I think you can side out like everything except the Fieldsmith. I don't know if you did it. I did everything except one Finch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Go second. Especially against combo decks. Yeah, Finch is yeah. not very good one second. Yeah. yeah. And then hand traps. Uh, we decided to play the highest impact hand traps. Because so one both. hand one hand trip had to annoy our opponent. We didn't have to win with hand trips yeah. because we thought it's very inefficient to yeah. just throw hand trips at your opponent and expect them to end on nothing. Yeah. Because so that's there's no HUC in the game. Yeah, there's basically not possible in this format. Because yeah. the decks push through hand trips so well. So we just wanted to uh, put hand trips that make our opponent think a lot and um yeah, they have to uncomfortable game yeah, states. Yeah. They have to uh, play through uncomfortable game states and their boards get worse. Exactly. And sometimes they insta win. Yeah. So we played three Maelstrom in the main deck, uh, three Nibiru and three Impermanent hand drops. Just uh, Impermanent because it's very generic, Nibiru it's very high impact, and Maelstrom it hits every deck, and everyone has to like start thinking and make weaker boards. Yeah, also after deciding, um, Impermanence is important for bear trees, yeah. so they don't set up um, blue tiers. Yeah, right. Maelstrom is what makes your opponent and board worse and like makes shine every board breaker or every hand trap. Yeah. Uh, if you pair more charm with an Nib, even though it's not gonna be a, resolu a resolutive solution, yeah. you're gonna like, you're gonna eat it enough to be able to break even with the engine sometimes. Yeah. And that's why the combination of Purulia, Nibiru and Impermanence were just as. Yes. Something which is really interesting with this card, if you go first and start this card, game one, because uh, after siding you, you side it out for sure. Mm -hmm. But you can um, activate it if your hand is very good. So, because everybody's on Phantasma, Abyssia and Nibiru, uh -huh. so you can draw. Yeah. I'll think that even. So, nine hand jobs in the main, and then the board breakers to complement those. That's three droplet, uh, three talents. As in our opinion, these were the strongest, most generic board breakers. Yes. Talents also live going first, droplet also live going first. You may notice that all of these cards were going first in some form of capacity, even though they are board breakers. Only Mochomi is a bit weak going first. Yeah, I'm playing it this time. And then the spice of the tournament, I guess, in our deck was uh, three Foolish Girl Guts with one in Black or Laughs. Um, That's the card was, in my opinion, fine, but I don't think I would play it again. Like, the card was okay, should I? Like, we were theorizing over the fact that we can send original to replace the Necro Keep in uh, the extra deck. My main concern was the fact that they never stopped Witch, so this card was so sending Black Bolt yeah. Labs. And yeah, the yeah, idea behind it, we really want for this, these four cards should, should be like, uh, had, had, had to into a second card. So, but the goods is like, um, also a card that lets you play go first. When, for example, Normal Summoners gets imprimed, you go Anima, Set original and then put this deck to Poplar, and then we can play from there. So we like that. And um, this outs like the the Abusa. It outs Rage. It outs the IP. It's very. For yeah. me, it was very very nice. It's very flexible like because it outs something without targeting it. So you can out. You can yeah. you can threaten Desiree. Yeah. But that's not targetable. And you can also out the um, Unchained Rage while still in the graveyard. Yeah. So the card was was nice. Uh, I think I would pair it with an Echo Tip. Yeah. Like my main concern. Uh, and, af and after siding, uh, this is I I aimed at Blue Tears with us once. Because um, the bear trees got negated, and then I yeah. tears and uh, still got the. Um, yeah. I think it was DDG. Yeah. All right. 
That's the main, it's 43 cards uh, onto the extra deck. Um, we played one anima, and then one. Mandatory. Mandatory. Yes. Also, this one was because of the spell cast. Agony. Agony. Yes. Yes. And then the Fiendsmith extra deck. I think monsters are uh, one requiem, one in sequence. Mandatory. Yeah, then IPSP. Mandatory. Yeah. Mandatory. Heater. Yeah. Um, you definitely need two fire uh, link twos. So yes. this one is just the most flexible one next to Phoenix. Yep. Yes. And Celine, you need it for combos and it makes extra I, case. I like, I Easier. love Celine. You're well done. Uh, Promethean, not much to say. Um, we play Axis Code Talker. Don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Zero and me main deck, but I think you cited it, right? No, I was I was playing it in the X, like, we'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, for me, it was good, but. Yeah, um, it was, for me, it was great. It was awesome. <laughs> never sang with it, like, literally never. Yeah, I, I mean, really I, like every match. I, I dodged the Fantasma with it. I saw it, I ashed the Fantasma, and then on my turn I went to the secret Fantasma because of the effect. And then I out shit the boss. Also, it's self-explanatory, I think. Good night. Um, Beatrice, the Lacrimosa. Mandatory. And then our last bet this for, Zio, for Zio and me was Typhon. Um, because we thought it's very good in a format where people throw headdrops at each other, and it's super good. Um, to stop it. <laughs> to stop Flambridge effect because it's not in the mirror. It's not always easy yeah. to out of Flambridge um, without triggering it. Also, it can out the Desiree without triggering it. Also, there's like uh, some ways where you can OTK with it. Like in weird spots, you, like you there's the OTK coming from nothing when you just put this over something and then you bounce the last card in hand and you dodge the Biru at the same time. I did it once and he had, and he had the Biru. That was good. Okay. I mean. This is good. I liked it. Like the theory behind this, but I would play Necro Keep over this. Necro Keep, in my experience during the entire tournament, came up. I counted them seven times, and I lost two games because of this. Like because of not having Necro Keep in the extra deck. Um, if I would change something, would it be the access code for Necro Keep, and I still would play the zero over the uh, uh, Typhoon. What I like the most about it, like the most about the Desiree. Uh, which is basically pierced with Desirane eh, for people uh, like being confused about my pronunciation. <laughs> um, is the fact that you can summon, you can summon it going second with uh, sequential, and then you can use Tractus in the graveyard to fusion summon into Lacrimosa using those two, and then you can do uh, chilling one Lacrimosa, chilling two Desiree in order to send the card, and then rebond the Desiree with uh, the Lacrimosa. And this was a play that I did a lot during the tournament, especially going second. It was kind of clutch in every scenario. Uh, maybe that's why I didn't like usually go for the access code torquer because like usually I was recycling my resources a lot. Uh, that's the only change in the extra deck I would apply for the side deck. Uh, uh, can them be yeah. Before. I mean, I guess you guys like it. Why? Like you guys like? Because I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't make Typhoon that often. I made it once against Brandon, where it was okay. I still lost because he had normal Sona Albus. But um, yeah. In testing, it was good. Yeah, in testing it was good, but it didn't. You splash it over access yeah. code and usually OTK in the middle, but there were not many middle during. Yeah, this exactly. Yeah. So that's why I didn't. I play really a lot of Tempai. It just doesn't yeah. go. Well, I played a lot too. Tempai too. <laughs> we're not. We're not to compare that too. Okay, side deck. Uh, three Ash Blossom, very generic. I think yeah. you needed to cover up the rope decks because this deck usually is very strong against rope, but if you tech for the mirror a lot and you try to maximize your um your matchup into the mirror, you lose percentages against. Other decks, yes. and I think there's certain decks that you need cards like Ash Blossom again also, because the rope decks are in general very weak to it. Also, you have to like this meta. You have to put it in when you start because like there's Mod Chami and Fantasma everywhere. So uh, put this in when you start. Yeah. Speaking of which, we played two Fantasma. I think we actually played three. I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very good uh, because it covers both the meta decks, and even if they Ash, if you still have it on your own turn, it's very, especially very strong if they go IP into SP and you have chaining one Fantasma. Yeah. Uh, that way they can't up low side or they lose all their triggers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I played the third Fantasma by yes. we... And we played, we played Cult Boy mm -hmm. instead. Um, I thought that one of the main, or we thought that one of the main loose cons was Shifter. Um, so playing Cult Boy just makes sense. Uh, it's also not bad against certain decks going second, like uh, Brandon or Yubel. Or Tempo. Or Tempo. Um, <laughs> so it was a card that was occasionally flexible it was, so it was we figured it's it's worth to to side it when i drew it it was it was always clutch 
Uh, I played the third Phantasma over the call by uh, because I wanted to recycle more options as possible to draw my board breakers. And also I did not play Ash. Uh, I thought that in this tournament, uh, this card that does absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing was clutch. Now you would say that you would side Ash against Tempai, but Tempai under Prosperity and Dogwood can never OTK. Uh, he, I actually won three Tempai matches because I had Dogwood going first and going second. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm correct. And sometimes actually Tempai is going first for side, so pay attention. Come back. All right, then for a back removal, we played two staring one. Yeah, there, was two. there was actually um, a lot more back row decks than we expected. Yeah. So when we were playing the 3v3 and like going around the venue and on Friday, uh, we figured, okay, we actually have to respect the macro matchups yeah. a lot more than we thought. Yeah. So we made like basically a last minute decision to, this card was bloated. to play these, yeah. these three this, for this, sure. This is broken. This it, this was broken. And it was very good. Yeah, it was no so complaints at all. Was I, did not, I did not face back row matchups, did you? Uh, you, but I was signing it against you. Yes, it's, yes, it's very good. Okay, sure. And then we played two thrusts. Yeah, goated, goated. Very good card. I saw your results. I, I want, multiple yeah, I, I wanted the third point. I wanted the third point. It was so good. Yes, yeah, so it's very good because uh, it's another uh, fail save against shifter. Um, so in shifter decks, you you can usually set like one of the blowout traps that we side for um, yes. blue angel anyways. Yes. And you just have to kill them. Yeah. Um, and it's very hard for Tempai to kill on the D barrier if you yes. like put up some kind of bodies at least. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're a very good card. I so, loved it. And a lot of matchups is worth going second because it's just extra copies of cards like Talons or Monster. It's like yeah, like for this meta is the perfect side card because it's like for go first and go second, awesome. I think my only issue with this was that we would have to pay attention that we weren't playing um, too few end traps overall because you cannot go full board breakers outside because of the FTKs. But since we were maining some of the handbook, it was fine to, to yeah. side curves like from yeah. Sand Mines and Nimble White yeah. so Yes. And then we played an FTK package of Blue Tears, D Barrier, Eradicator, and different Dimension Ground. Um, I think most of the people are Blue Tears, so this is not discussed. I think it's much. way better than Skate Barrier. Yeah. Well, it, it is, it is, it is. I agree. And then D Barrier is, I think, the most important of those. Yeah. Because this actually hits the next that can kill you. Yeah. Um, so it hits like Branded, it hits uh, Tempai, or whatever, and usually those decks are just group to Deberia. You have to Deberia, they don't do anything. Yeah. And then it was a bit of a discussion with discussion which other matchups uh, we would want to cover Blue Tears. I think what most people are playing is a different dimensional ground. Yeah, this one, oh, this, one was, this one was good enough, but I never like resolved the yeah. Eradicate. No. Uh, I did I did three times. Yeah. Uh, this one, I personally didn't want to play because my train of thought was that if you play against matchups where uh, DDG is good, namely Snake Eye and Yubel, they are probably trying to hand trap you. And at the point where you resolve blue tiers for um, different dimension ground, you also have the rest of your board. So at that point, you should be winning anyways. And there's only really a game if they have a lot of board breakers. And I did not use it despite playing like five Snake Eye and the Yubel. So. I know. Probably I would cut it for the two of the trust. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think I it's would, necessary. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I resulted often in one, one of the, the game. Like I would cut one of the two for one the third of the trust. This is like, the this is like that insane. Yep. Yeah. He's, this one. This one I think is very good because um, the there's a lot of labyrinth and relics on around. Even though those decks aren't per se um, inherently that good, they have a very good snake eye up. Yeah. Um, so. If you side this in, you're not breaking. You are like winning one game for one hundred percent for sure. Exactly. So you can you cannot get two. You you win one, you win one game for sure, and then you only have to win one of the others. So um, I think it's worth, especially because against those decks, you can even side it going second. Um, as soon as, as as soon as you draw a witch, you can just you can just set it, and those decks you. If they don't clear it, you, next turn you, you just go summon witch, eradicator. Yeah. Um, so it's not even like a brick or anything. Um, I don't think it's mandatory mandatory to play, but um, it definitely helps those magic yeah. Tools. yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> so you don't have to like um, uh, fear yeah. both sides. All right. I see you're going to go up there. Um, I guess the yeah, I can see that. What they call it? Yes, the type yet. All right. and sisters. Hold up, shoutouts. Yes. Shoutouts out the, the whole team. Think of Bui, Nikushke, Kamp, 
uh, Daniel Hartmann, Ding Kanne Gott, Simon Jung Klaus, Nimrod Sorbonne, of course, Maxi, and he's still playing top cut right now. 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 Yeah, the honest ball. The honest ball. I think. No, a special shout out to Nico because his idea was a bit. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll shout out the my home community in Aachen as well. Um, special thanks to Sebastian for lending me basically all the cards. Um, it's like the uh, Snake Eye cards and the Finsworth cards. Um, also thanks to Dennis for also lending me few more cards um, and special thanks or like special shout outs to um, the Boomy guys from Aachen and CS61. Special shout out to every church in the uh, city. Uh, special shout out to my team, Maxi, the Bozo, Spark, G, you already know what that is. Uh, and special shout out to Zlivci. Yeah. Group 5, my brother. The sleeves were actually insane. I loved them. Shuffling them were insane. Okay, save that. I think we can close this up. This was insane. This was an insane event, a beautiful experience. The city is amazing. The k is even more amazing. Uh, I wish to see you guys to the next event. See ya next time.